Good afternoon, my name is Frances Cachel Manuel and the topic that is assigned to me are quality and budget education. Quality education is the first major issue that the Philippine government should resolve, but somehow it is recently improving. The quality of the Philippine education has declined few years ago due to poor results from standard entrance tests conducted among elementary and secondary students, as well as the tertiary levels. The results were way below the target mean score, high dropout rates, high number of repeaters, low passing grades, lack of particular language skills, failure to adequately respond and address the needs of the people with special needs, overcrowded classroom, and poor teacher performances have greatly affected the quality of education in the Philippines. The National Achievement Test, or NAT, is a standardized set of examinations taken in the Philippines by students in grade 3, 6, 10, and 12. The test is designed to determine their academic levels, strength, and weaknesses, as well as their knowledge learned in major subject through out the year. National Career Assessment Examination, or NCI, it is an aptitude test geared towards providing information through test results for self-assessment, career awareness, and career guidance of junior high school students of the K-12 basic education program. Budget Education During the CHED budget hearing, the 3 billion pesos budget cut for the Tulong Donong program was once again brought up following concerns that around 350,000 college students receiving stipend would be cut off from aid. The budget for Tulong Donong Cheds needed base scholarship program decreased to 1.19 billion pesos in the proposed budget from 4.19 billion pesos in 2018 General Appropriations Act. The 1.19 billion pesos allocation is expected to fund almost 100,000 students next year. According to the Department of Budget and Management, the budget for program under the Student Financial Assistance Program line, up, line item, which includes Tulong Dunong, was rationalized to make way for the implementation of the free tuition law, particularly its tertiary education subsidy component, which was given an additional 11 billion peso allocation in the 2019 budget. The tertiary education subsidy component is allocated 27 billion pesos in the 2019 proposed budget from an appropriation of 16 billion pesos in 2018. Under the test, student and en student enrolled in both public and private institutions can receive allowances for room and board cost, transportation, books, and school supplies. Those in private, private HEIs can even have their tuition or a portion of its covered by educational vouchers under the same program. There is also additional support for students with disability or those in courses that require board exams. The DBM attributes the reducer, reduced budget of the BIF for 2019 to the spending performance of the DepEd in recent years and the shift to annual cash-based appropriations. In 2015, only 39.3 billion pesos have been obligated and only 6.68 billion pesos have been disbursed out of the 53.83 billion pesos 
appropriated to the fund. In 2016, 82.26 billion pesos were appropriated of which 59.8 billion pesos were obligated and only 16.38 billion pesos have been disbursed. In 2017, an additional 36.52 billion pesos or 118.78 billion pesos were appropriated to the fund but only 113.65 billion pesos were obligated and only 7.39 billion pesos were disbursed. With the implementation of cash-based budgeting for this coming fiscal year, the expectation is that the level of disbursement as a percentage of obligations would increase. Education continues to receive the highest allocation in the proposed 2019 budget with a total budget of 659.3 billion pesos up by 72.2 billion pesos or by 12.3 percent from in from its cash base equivalent of 587.1 billion pesos in 2018 that's all thank you Good day everyone, I am Genrio M. Bustillo and I am going to discuss about the affordability of education and dropout rate or out-of-school youth in the Philippines. Affordability of education Affordability of education is also one of the issues facing the Philippine educational system. Digging to the root cause of this problem leads us to poverty. The socioeconomic disadvantage of students who are members of family with low income. Poverty has always been the primary reason why many students consider to drop out. Another thing to consider is when you study in public school, it doesn't mean that you are exempted from all of the expenses. The school facilities are all free because the government allocated budget for that. But the students are still required to comply with the school requirements needed in their studies. Having the basic, ne basic necessities for schooling like school supplies, books, laptop, printers, and internet are the edge of students who belong to a family with adequate income. A family that can support your studies and needs is an advantage. At some point, there are some students who juggle studying and work at the same time. Working their ass off just to provide for their need is really a struggle as they needed to divide their attention into two. It's also one of the reasons why many students consider dropping out and just focus on one priority. The next topic is dropout rate or out-of-school youth. Another issue in Philippine educational system is the high dropout rate. According to UNESCO's data, the Philippines has overall 1.4 million children who are out of school. Furthermore, Philippines is the only ASEAN country that is included in the top 5 highest number of out-of-school youth. As stated by Franz Castro, the Secretary of Alliance of Concerned Teachers, or ACT, that there is a grave need to address the alarming number of out-of-school youth in the country. He also mentioned that the increasing number of out-of-school children is being caused by poverty. The price increases in prices of oil, electricity, rice, water, and other basic commodities are further pushing the poor into dire poverty. Therefore, as the family becomes poorer, Number of students considered the option of quitting school and work instead. Back to square one, poverty is one of the socioeconomic problems that has domino effect to other sectors. The lack of basic necessities such as food and shelter really affect the life of many youths who want to study. Another conflict arises as pandemic happened. A lot of people lose their job and many families were affected. Because of this financial crisis, some students, instead of continuing to study in the new normal, many prefer the option of work and provide for their family needs first. That's all for my report. Mismatch. Mismatch refers to incorrect matching. 
It is commonly analyzed in situations pertaining to a tool that cannot be managed. There are many scenarios that can lead to a mismatch. For example, there is a large mismatch between educational training and actual job. This stands to be a major issue at the tertiary level and it's furthermore the cause of continuation of a substantial amount of educated yet unemployed or underemployed people. According to Dean Salvador Bellaro Jr., the corner educated congressman representing Ang Education Party List in the House of Representatives, the number of educated unemployed reaches around 600,000 per year. He refers to said condition as the education gap. Next, brain drain. Brain drain is a long term indicating substantial immigration or migration of individuals. According to geographically, brain drain may occur at the organizational or industrial level when workers perceive better pay, benefits, or upward within another company or industry. It is also a persistent problem evident in educational system of the Philippines due to the modern phenomenon of globalization with the number of overseas Filipino workers who work abroad at any time during the period April to September 2014 was estimated at 2.3 million. This ongoing mass migration subsequently inducts an unparalleled brain drain along a side grip economic implication. Additionally, Philippine society hit Herito is footing the bill for the education of millions who successively spend their more productive years abroad. And that's all for my report. I would like to introduce Ms. Shanami Paloka to discuss the, discuss the social divide, lack of facilities, and teacher shortage in public schools, and the issues regarding the K-12. Good afternoon, I'm Shanami Paloka. And I am going to discuss about social divide in education, lack of facilities and teacher shortage in public school, and lastly is the issues regarding the K-12. Social divide, the distinct social cleavage regarding educational opportunities, remains problematic for more than one reason. Historically, in most modern societies, education has had an equalizing. One Filipino columnist wrote, Education has become part of the institutional mechanism that divides the poor and the rich. There are three primary social classes exist in the Philippines. The low-income class, the middle-income class, and the high-income class. In reality, yung, yung na-apply yung, yung social divide, which is a poor and uh, sa rich, in a part that yung mga public school, oo, public school nakaka-acquire yung mga poor, yung mga middle class, yung quality ng education, madalas hindi ganun ka ganda kasi walang nga pera. So, kadalasan sa Pilipinas kasi, hindi pinaglalaanan ng ganong kalaking halaga. Yung mga, tulad ng mga subjects, hindi ganon binibigay ng mga school, public school dito sa Pilipinas. Lalo na yung mga, sa college na, college school dito sa Pilipinas. Yung mga subjects na dapat na ibinibigay dun sa mga estudyante, which is dapat related sa course nila, hindi ganun ka na ibibigay. Pero pagdating sa mga private school, which is nagbabayad yung mga student, yung mga subjects nila ay mas, mas connected sa course nila, mas nagigain sila ng knowledge regarding dun sa course nila. Lack of facilities and teacher shortage in public schools. There are large shortage of facilities across Philippine public schools. This includes classroom, teachers, desks and chairs, textbooks, and audio-video materials. Under Secretary Juan Miguel Luis, reportedly over 17 million students are enrolled in Philippine public schools and at an annual population growth rate of 2.3%, about 1.7 million babies are born every year, which means that in a few years' time, more individuals will as assert ownership over their share of the limited education provisions. To sum it up, there are too many students and too little resources. 
In President Aquino's fourth State of the Nation address, he spoke of government's achievement of zero back zero backlog in facilities such as classrooms, desks and chairs, and textbooks, which has addressed the gap in shortage of teachers. Mm. Dito naman sa lack of facilities and teacher shortage in public schools, which, totoo naman to, kasi kahit kabing mga estudyante, nararamdaman namin yung sh shortage nga ng facilities, tsaka sa teacher, siyempre, hindi rin natin masisisi yung mga graduate na teachers kasi kapag nagtatrabaho ka in public school, syempre, hindi... Ito based lang din sa mga naririnig tsaka nababalita na mga nagre-reklamo mga professors and teachers na when you're in public school, delay lagi yung sahod nyo. Which is, para sa akin ay mali kasi lahat tayo ay gum nangangailangan din ng pera. Hindi porket nasa public school sila ay lagi na lang delay, ba? Diba? So, yung sa facilities naman, sa sobrang taas ng percentage rate ng population growth ng Pilipinas, kulang na kulang pa rin yung budget na nilalaan nila. So, as a student, I suggest na every year na mag-assess sila ng kung maglaan sila lagi ng budget increasingly, hindi yung nag stay lang sa iisang budget dapat tumataas din yung budget nila the more na nag-growth yung population ng bansa natin Issues regarding the K-12, there is dispute with regard to the quality of education by the system The students' performance in both the 2014 National Assessment Test and National Career Assessment Examination were excessively below the target mean score. Having said this, the poor quality of the, the Philippine education system is manifested in the comparison of completion rates between highly urbanized city of Metro Manila, which is also happens to be not only the country's capital but the largest metropolitan area in the Philippines and other places in the country such as Mindanao and Eastern Visayas. This kind of statistics this kind of statistic is no surprise to the education system in the Philippine context. Students who hail from Philippine urban areas have the financial capacity to complete at the very least their primary school education. The second issue that the Philippine education system faces is the budget for education. The Philippines remains to have one of the lowest budget allocation to, remain to education among ASEAN, ASEAN countries. The third prevalent issue that the Philippine education system continuously encounters is the affordability of education. A big disparity in educational achievement is evident across various social groups. Social economically dis disadvantaged students, otherwise known as students who are members of high and low income poverty stricken families, have immensely higher dropout rates in the elementary level. Additionally, most freshman students at, at the tertiary level come from relatively well-off families. Lastly, there is a large proportion of mismatch wherein there is exists a massive proportion of mismatch between training and actual jobs. This stands for a major issue, issue at the tertiary level and it is furthermore the cause of the continu continuation of substantial, substantial amount of educa educated yet unemployed or un underemployed people. So yun sa third issue lang ililinawin ko kasi ang sinasabi kasi dito, hindi nasusunod yung, di ba meron tayong on-job training bago, bago tayong graduate, yung mga college student, mga tertiary level na students. May times, madalas kasi itong nangyayari na yung, yung binibigay na trabaho sa kanila when nasa OJT sila, hindi compatible dun sa course na kinukuha nila. So, ang tendency nito, ang, res ang nagiging resulto kapag ka nagtrabaho na pumasok ka sa trabaho, 
hindi mo alam yung gagawin mo. Basta ko sa trabaho na regarding dun sa course mo, hindi siya ala Yung ginagawa mo ng OJT, hindi align dun sa actual na ginagawa ng trabaho mo. So, yun. Kaya mismatch, yun yung nagiging problema. Tsaka, kahit maraming graduate na students dito sa Philippines, mababa pa rin yung employment rate dito sa Pilipinas. Tsaka, hindi lahat ng graduate ng graduate sa ano, yung nagiging trabaho nila ay yung kung ano yung natapos nila. Madalas hindi na yun nasusunod. And that's all for our report. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.